Hello and welcome to the show. I'm sitting here with Mr. David Bidain. He's the head of the news agency. What do you call your... Well, it's, it, it, I have a two investigative offices. One is the Israel Resource News Agency, and the second is the Center for Near East Policy Research. One does news reporting, the other does news investigations. So, what, David, what would you would like to talk about today? Well, the focus of our work is the issue of the Arab refugees from 1948 who are still in refugee camps 70 years later. Uh, there was a Swedish diplomat by the name of Count Fot Bernadotte who was involved in UN mediation. He was very upset by the law of return that the Knesset enacted as its the first Jews. law. Right. So he decided to push the right of return for all the Arabs who left in the war in the 1948, for, during the 1948 war, to be able to enable them to have the right to go back to where they came from in 48. And so, ironically, people were put in the Arabs, about a half a million or so, were put into temporary refugee camps, 59 temporary refugee camps. And guess around, what? The, around Israel. Right. Israel, in Israel, in Lebanon, Lebanon, Lebanon Jordan. Jordan, Syria. And guess what? They're still there. And that's 70 years after. 70 years later, correct. They're still there. And, they, and the, 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 what I've been learning, with, uh, learning about over the years and, and investigating is their school system where the, basic of the basis of the school system is right of return by force of arms. Now, this is not a local issue. And this is not even an Israel-Arab issue. The biggest nations in Western Europe, including Sweden, finance that system. Sweden gives the equivalent of $62 million each year to keep people in refugee camps under the false pretenses of the right of return. Not to, not to West Bank and Gaza, but to the villages they came from in 48, which are now Haifa, Tel Aviv, Netanya, Ashkelon, Eshdod, Be'er Sheva, whatever. And that's a big problem because the children grow up saying the only thing they live for is to go back to their homes in 48 and to kill the Jews who live there. And they still carry the key. Oh, absolutely. They carry the key, their identification cards, pictures, drawings, anything that they can, they can imagine they can get their, their, their hands on. It's the Palestinians is the only refugee in the world that inherit their, their refugee well, status well, there, from their parents and grandparents. Well, there are some, actually, in other countries that do. Uh, but none of them, no refugee agents, a, a community in the world, believes they have the intrinsic right of return. Nobody. That's what's new about it. And it's, it's supported universally uh, all around the world. And, and we're talking about a $1.2 billion budget to keep people in refugee camps in the indignity of refugee camps, uh, waiting to go back to the where they came from. Is that, you're talking about the UNRWA? Yeah, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, financed by 68 nations. Uh, Sweden is the number five nation at uh, giving $62 million a year. And they, they're in there under false pretenses, not just giving them services, but, give, but indoctrinating them, brainwashing them that they have to go back to where they came from. That's their whole purpose in life. Is that true that the, the totally budget of all refugees all over the world, it's less than UNRWA's refugees' well, budget. No, let's put it this way. The per capita uh, amount that they get is much more. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's 5,000, well, actually 6,000 workers for UNHCR. That's the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, working with refugees around the world. And with UNRWA, you have 30,000 people working with them. And they're all local Arabs. Who, uh, and not only are they are local Arabs, but they're often members of terrorist organizations. What what do you do for that uh, be, to prevent all this? Well, it's not false a, information. The best thing we can do is to suggest to the donor countries to look again at where your money is going. Instead of look, the money is going to is already allocated. It's not going to stop. One billion dollars doesn't stop so fast. But if you're giving money. The schools, you have to take the school books out, which, which, which uh, indoctrinate children to, to jihad. We purchased all the school books. You can take a look at them. You can interview, you can talk to our researchers. They'll talk to you about what's there, our Arab and Jewish researchers. Again, delete books that call for war. Because that's not what the United School Nation, books. School books. The United Nations uh, should not be pushing that. Number two, teachers who are members of terrorist organizations should be removed. Three, there's also a uh, war curriculum, there's war classes in the schools where the children go through uh, all kinds of exercises, how we're going to make war. 
four, you have a, uh, there's a singer. Uh, he, the United Nations, the UNRWA hired, hired a youth, youth arm to go around the world. His name is Muhammad Asaf, and he sings songs of murdering Jews. Five, you have to do everything possible to have, uh, well, how shall we say, oversight of the money coming in. And the, number six, there's no reason in the world why people have to be restrained and kept in these camps. Encourage them to go elsewhere. Right now, UNRWA doesn't. UNRWA wants them to stay where they are until a political solution will happen. Well, there, which, there, will, not, there will not be a political solution. So help people get out of there. And these are intelligent people with high-level education. Every UNRWA child has at least a 10th grade education, if not more. And therefore, they're welcome as workers abroad because they're, they're intelligent. They can do all kinds of things. And I know that there's 17 countries. When we had a problem a few years ago with the one UNRWA camp in, in uh, Iraq, and they had to be, after the uh, fall of Saddam Hussein, they were sent around the country, around the world. There were 17 nations, 17 nations that received UNRWA uh, residents. Which are Palestinians. Yeah, these are Palestinian Arabs, sure, absolutely. But yeah, they've nations, been living 50 years in, in seven, Iraq, yeah, 70 years. 70 years in these camps, correct, since 1949. And this is 1948, excuse me. And this is the issue. To keep people in refugee camps, and I'm a social worker by profession, and I don't like to see many people manipulated for political purposes. So saying, saying to someone that you have to stay in a, in a misery, in the, in the indignity of a refugee camp because of an ideology and, and a goal which can't be achieved, there's something wrong with that. Now, the, the last yesterday, uh, several thousand children marched from their UNRWA refugee camps towards the Gaza border saying we want, we, we, want a, uh, we want our homes back from 48. They want to go into the, into the Negev and to go to Ashkelon, Ashdod, Beersheba. They were stopped. But my fear is, having we've been filming these children going through military training with real guns. You can see that on our website. Uh, my fear is that they're going to come there with the guns that they have at home, children, approaching the border. And uh, when that happens, many of them will die. Do you have any sort of proof that the books of UNRWA you're talking about are this? Well, we just, what we did was we hired four researchers, two Arab researchers and two Jewish researchers to, to, to go through the books. We first of all bought all the books. I got permission to buy the books from Yasser Arafat back in 20 years ago and he arranged for us to have a relationship with the Ministry of, of uh, Education. The Palestinian Administ Authority Ministry of Education supplies the books to, uh, to UNRWA, and we got all of them. We, did, we checked it against the Internet to make sure that we have... Uh, the right books. Absolutely. And what we've seen in the last two years in the, the, latest, uh, the latest books, it's no longer incitement, it's now indoctrination, now brainwashing. There's no more Israel. It's not, you're not fighting Israel, you're fighting the Zionist occupation, the Zionist conquest. Every place in the land of Israel whether it's inside the West Bank or not inside, whether it's... It's where, occupied. It's, it's, uh, no, conquered. Con conquered, and the people have to be expelled. In one of the, lessons, one of the school books, one of the most amazing things we found uh, in, in a third grade school book, uh, a teacher asked the class, well, what do we do with the, with the, with the six million Zionists who are here and uh, you know, who won't leave? And the answer was, we have to exterminate them. That was a very clear answer. And you have that on sure. those books sure. and all that. All the books are mounted on our website. Uh, all the whole, all, all 250 pages, very clearly. Uh, there, uh, IsraelBehindTheNews.com. You can see it very clearly. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. If there was a peace curriculum, we would publish it tomorrow morning. But it doesn't exist now. In the newest school books, for the first time, there's a page in honor of peace. Well, it doesn't, but it's put in the middle of everything. There's no explanation of what that's supposed to be. By the page in honor of peace. Well, if you have peace and you have at the same time the children being trained for war, there's a certain contradiction there. Okay, this thing about two-state solution. For the Palestinians and for the books, there's one state and call it uh, Palestine. That's correct. With no Jews. That's correct. That's the Judenrein. That's right. And that, for, for perhaps that's the reason why Germany has tripled their their contribution to UNRWA because they know something about the Judenrein philosophy. What do we do about that? We have to say, we have, the, the most important thing is the dialogue with the donor nations. I do not believe 
that the parliaments of, parliament of any Western donor, na donor nation, whether it's Germany or Sweden or England, that they have, they have made a decision to teach the children to make war on the Jews. I don't believe that. They are being told, by, oh, no, oh, it's all for peace, everything's fine. I've seen the memos. A memo we got, for, we got almost the identical email from seven foreign ministries. Oh, we know that UNRWA is making school books for peace. Well, we prove that they're not. Can you do that? Absolutely. By just opening the books. And by opening up the books, you see exactly what's there. There's, not, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. The school books for UNRWA are school books for war. And now the, the interesting thing is that uh, I've been, I visited the United Nations the first time in 1960 when I was 10 years old, and there's a big sign at the United Nations, peace starts here. That's one of the themes of the United Nations. Well, how can you have a United Nations agency where, the, where it's not peace starts here, but war begins here? There's something wrong here. Now, the United Nations doesn't give any money to UNRWA. Well, they give for the public relations. It's the donor countries that do. And there's no aspect of the, of, of the United Nations that over, overlooks, that, that oversees the UNRWA uh, curriculum. What do they do with their money? No, there is none. I, as we, we, we see, uh, what's most interesting, at a time when, they, when Trump, President Trump announced a 3%, that he would cut down 3% of the UNRWA budget, 3%. We're talking about 3% of, uh, two, of uh, $1.2 billion. And uh, in other words, $65 million, that's 3%. Uh, there was the UNRWA public relations people have been putting out these, these, these alarming memos. Starvation! We have no food! We have no medical services! Everything is falling apart! Because of a 3% cut? Well, I traced it to see if the, you know, I take, take a look at all of the uh, allocations. There has been at least $300 million of food and medical supplies that have reached Gaza in the last, in the last two months. So how can they say that? Well, on the other hand, when you have journalists who don't follow through, and it looks really good when you have pictures of children who are, are starving, it's good but for where them. are they, these children? The, they, the children walk over, they, they take the children in front, of, in front of the cameras, and the children say, I have nothing to eat. It's a, it's, I mean, I think the most important, uh, most important gesture that the world should give UNRWA is, the, is an Oscar at the Academy Awards. The Academy Awards in Los Angeles this year, there should be the Oscar for Best Supporting Lie. The thing is, with what we learn, when Arafat was talking to the West, he was saying something, and then when he was talking to his own people, he was saying something. Right. Totally different. Abbas was doing the same thing, and it seems like UNRWA is saying the, doing the same thing to get the donor countries to... Right. People Donate do, money. Exactly. People don't do their homework. And by the way, I must say to his credit, Abbas says the same thing, to, say, says the same thing also uh, in Arabic and in English. The, just, the people don't follow what he says. That's all. He says we're going to have a peace conference based on, which is also based on right of return. In other words, there will be two states. One state for the one state for of Israel, which will be dominantly pa pa Arab, and the other, which is Palestine, which is the dominantly Arab. What are we talking about here? He doesn't he doesn't mince words into what, what he's talking about. There was a great film called The Blues Brothers, and they were they went to get something to eat, and they hear the music, and they say, "What what kind of music do you have? We have two kinds, cl uh, classic and western, you know, country and western, country and western." Let me say that again. The Blues Brothers, they, they say they want, they want they hear there's two kinds of music, country and western. It's the same thing. Come on. So, if these countries, the don donating country, knows, see all your things that they had with these researchers and all that, they they won't look at it. They won't look at it. Nope. I just found out something today. There is an UNRWA support conference happening in Washington, very soon. And the woman who is convening the UNRWA reform, or the support conference is a veteran of the United States State Department who was supposed to oversee everything coming into UNRWA. Now she's being paid by UNRWA to promote UNRWA. How interesting. Fascinating. And that, that's what goes on here. Why won't they listen? Ask them. I think you should ask. It's very important to ask why. First of all, of course, it's more convenient to have 
for uh, the Universal Studios of, of the world have groups of people who are refugees and who need a billion dollars. Uh, but I think if you were to ask uh, the, the representatives of the donor nations, why aren't you asking for a change in your school books? Why aren't you asking for the removal of terrorists? Why aren't you having, uh, having a, uh, oversight and transparency? Uh, why aren't you firing the uh, schools, the, the, the singer for UNRWA who promotes war? Why aren't you allowing people from UNRWA to leave, to leave, to make better lives for themselves? Ask them. I think it's very important. Generally, they don't like to ask, answer questions. This year, we're going to have an election in Sweden. And if we show the people where the tax money goes, uh -huh. those 63 million yes. dollars, right? Yes. It's a lot of money for Sweden oh, now. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, can, can't you do something about like showing that to those people? Of course we can. So I, I think that a independent Swedish uh, agency should fund our work, give money for our cameras to go and find out e exactly what's going on, and we can do. In the, in the, there's no problem filming. It's easy to, fil to film everything coming in. It's easy to do a graph to see how countries are giving the same money for the same projects and how money is disappearing. And there's enough Arab social workers and Arab teachers and Arab nurses who will talk about how the medical equipment that comes to UNRWA is being stolen. It's, it's a corruption. Corrupt, corruption is a, is, is, a, is a mild word. We're talking massive theft. With 68 nations, 68 nations were complicit. Is it 68 nations that donate to yeah, that's right. UNRWA? Uh -huh. So uh, why, why are they complaining about the Donald Trump's 3%? Because they're not saying 3%. They're saying he's he stopped all the money. Yeah, they don't say 3%. If they said 3%, people would laugh at them. Is it is it 3%? It's exactly 3%. That's exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about 3%. Holding back. He's not even talking about cutting it. Holding back it. Holding it back until things get reformed. We've suggested something called the Order Reform Initiative, which I just mentioned now, the, is, the issues that have to be done. But he, he cuts 3% and all of a sudden they say we have no food, excuse me? We're, it's an insult to the intelligence of the, of the uh, viewing audience to make such a claim. And as you learn more from the other experts on the Palestinian Authority, you're going to find out that the fact that they have used the, the Palestinian Authority curriculum may mean that they're violating principles, the United Nations principles. Maybe. Well, let's put it this way. There was an Arab university that created a, a uh, called Beirzeit University, created a curriculum for peace. Is that, uh, you're talking about Beirzeit? Beirzeit. I went to there, and then here's the curriculum, except it was vetoed by the Palestinian Authority and by UNRWA. However, UNRWA and the Palestinian Authority will show everybody that curriculum as they look at the curriculum for peace. They forget to mention that it was vetoed. It's just an error. In my business, you get to understand what happens when people lie through their teeth. I'm a social worker by profession. Part of my work is always dealing with people who are pathological liars, but they do so with a big smile, and they do so in business sense, and working for, for major non-government organizations. The fact that people are saying that there's no food in Gaza and no money in Gaza when there's 108 organizations that give out $700 million worth of aid to the people in Gaza. And 81% of the people in Gaza, the Arabs in Gaza, live in refugee camps under what premise? The premise of the right of return. And they all look at Arab houses that haven't been repaired. Why aren't they being repaired? Because they don't want them to be repaired because from their point of view, their houses are waiting for them in Ashkelon, Ashdod, Beersheba, Yafo. That's very clear. That's what they're taught. And they're not only taught, see, it used to be a joke. I've been working as a journalist and as a social worker. I've been working on this for 40 years. 30 years ago, when I began to professionally work on this issue, I walked into a refugee camp not far from Jerusalem, and I walked up to some children. Where are you from? They said, we're from Jaffa. The same today, 30 years later, their children will say we're from Jaffa, and we're going to kill everybody there. And there's not a smile on their face. They weren't, they're not joking. Before it was kind of a joke. It's not a joke now. 
So this incident that happened a few weeks ago, outside Jerusalem somewhere, when a, yesh- a rabbi was stabbed to death yes. by a Israeli Arab. No, he was a regular Arab. Oh, well, there's two. There's two. There's two rabbis who were who were who were murdered. Yeah. yeah. One by an Israeli Arab. One by a local Arab. Yes. Go ahead. But the, the Israeli Arab, he grew up in in Jaffa. That's correct. With the with the, his mother from Haifa. Right. But he has the, that ideology ingrained in him, indoctrinated into him, that if you see a Jew, you you've got to you have to kill him. And what's most important is that the Palestinian Authority has created an incentive system. They will pay you uh, for any Jew that you kill, and you'll get money for the rest of your life. It's a for, fun your fa- for your family. And by the way, if that's not a war crime, what is? Imagine if the head of Israel, the Prime Minister or pre- the President of Israel were to say, we're going to pay anyone who kills an Arab terrorist. Tomorrow morning there would be a, 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 an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. Here, well, we'll take some tax, some tax benefits away from you. People here get used to watching a, tr- a crime, a crime in, as, as, it's, as it's being created. We're talking about the first entity ever that will pay people to kill Jews. The Nazis didn't have that. It was part of the, you know, part of the, uh, the if you were an, uh, a soldier, yes. But the Nazis never had an incentive system for killing Jews. Come back, show me you kill, 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 kill 50 Jews and that's how much money you get. Didn't, it didn't exist. This is new. A new system for 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 paying people to kill Jews, and we got and people got used to it. In the in word of English, they got inured to it. They got they got uh, uh, trained in their minds that this is what happens. That is what this is what happened. Twenty four years, twenty five years after what they call the Oslo peace process. So, to in fact, you can do that if my family have an economical problem. Um, Sure, you can wake up. Um, you can wake, wake up, up in the morning. And then see, uh, I'm going to help my, my parents build yeah. a bigger house. And I go and kill two Jews, and I get uh, yeah, sure, sure. That's right. And we had a friend who was not far from here. He was getting up, getting off the bus, and he got, as he crossed the street, an Arab ran him over, and we had a, two, two 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 Jews, and uh, his uh, he was caught. He was beaten, but he wasn't killed. And he's in jail now, and uh, his family has already been able to build a second, second part of their house. They got the co- compensation for the Palestinian Authority because he, he injured two Jews, and he'll he'll be he'll get him 15 years in jail or something. And in those 15 years, there's going to be money in the bank for him. So when he comes out, he'll be a wealthy guy, a great investment, a great investment. He's 17. Terrible. He's a 15 year old now. When he's 32, he comes out of jail after serving 15 years for. Running over two Jews, and he'll be and the, the money's waiting for him. Is it different amount of money they get if you kill a oh, Jew absolutely. or you? Oh, absolutely, you get much more. Sure. If you kill a Jew. Yeah, yeah, much more. And if you and, and if you have the family plan, uh, there was a man who who an Arab who, who killed three people in a, in, a, in a Jewish family, and he was he was uh, sentenced to three three life sentences last year, last week, and now he's getting three subsidies for the rest of his life. Three or uh, three thousand dollars a month for each person they killed for the rest of his life, and that money, since he will would be will be getting out of jail so fast, goes to his family. So his family is doing very well. So they get like three thousand crown uh, dollars per person they kill for the rest of their life. That's right. Where this money comes the from? The money comes from the Palestinian Ministry of Finance, and that money comes from the donor nations who are giving to poor poor Palestinian Arabs. It's the UNRWA money too. No, 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 it's Palestinian Authority money. We don't, it could be UNRWA money, but we don't know about that. At this point, it's Palestinian Authority money that comes from humanitarian funds that are donated by the donor countries, such as, such as Sweden. Such as Sweden? Sure, of course. So we are in, we're paying taxes in Sweden, so Sweden can pay, donate money to people who sit in jail, have been killing Jews, and their family building second floor, third That's floor. Right. And but the, but the best case scenario is if they wound the Jew, and because if he if he's in jail for the rest of his life, he may not get out of jail. But a person who's just who's just maimed and, and crippled two Jews, he is the best possible arrangement. He goes. I'm going to repeat it. 15 years old, 17 years old, he uh, goes into jail, and he knows that when he's 32 and he gets out, he's going to make a life for himself. He has all that money waiting for him. 
uh, in escrow. Waiting. And meanwhile, the family has been also awarded. And if if a terrorist killed a Jew and being killed throughout the attack and all that, yeah. what happened to that? that his the, family. The family is the family is paid. Oh, they pay for oh, him. Oh, sure. If he's dead or alive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Bidet, what's the agenda of the Swedish Parliament doing this, like recognized Palestine, and doing a lot one-sided critic of the conflict Palestine, uh, Palestine, Israel. First of all, the reason Sweden is involved is involved in this for good reasons. Sweden wants to see peace in the Middle East. That's a good thing. Now, what Sweden should do is to invite our experts to come to Sweden to translate the school books into Swedish and to show the films of the schools and the film is the films of the people who are getting the aid. Sweden was the first nation to recognize the, the Hamas regime in Gaza. So let's, we've been filming the Hamas regime in Gaza for years, actually for 20 years. And the people who speak to us on behalf of Hamas in Gaza speak very openly that their purpose is to wipe out the Jews. I do not believe that Sweden knows this because these are, on, on a personal basis, they're charming. I sit with them over coffee. They're sweet people. They're family people. They're religious people. You know, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe that a person who's sitting with you in, in, in a coffee, in a, in a coffee shop, in, in, his, in his office, is as vicious as he is. So you bring it to, we have a, one of the, uh, we have on tape, on video, uh, a Hamas official praising UNRWA for allowing them to teach the children how to kill. Now this has to, it's very easy to bring it over there. We just have to have the people have the willingness and the budget to do so. And again, if we find a peace curriculum tomorrow morning, we'll publicize it. But we don't. That's but There isn't any. It doesn't exist. But in the public relations firm, what did UNRWA do? UNRWA just hired a very high power public relations firm in New York to make everyone believe that UNRWA, they want peace. They're, they're just a normal agency and, and they're not causing any trouble. And oh, I just saw a five minute clip on a very prominent American television program. The workers of UNRWA are dedicated, the people are dedicated, everything is okay, there's no problems with UNRWA, just the, the Israelis who are who have, a, have an army there. So they, they won't show the, the films of the children with guns, we can show that to you. Thank you, Mr. Bidain. Well, Mr. Bidain's in heaven, I'm here, I'm David. <laughs> فإن الجنود الأشداء قادمون بإذن الله عز وجل سوف يرونه في حيفا وتل أبيب وكل مكان في عمليات كسبية جهادية حركية على تدين السلاح البسيط الخفيف لنعدهم للمستقبل لكل سيكون في هناك شيء جديد يعني يكسبه هذا المشروع لنصل إلى مرحلة أن يكون جميع أبنائنا وجميع شبابنا شباب يعني قد محونا الأمية على السلاح إن شاء الله أعمل عمليات أطلع أستشهد أعمل أي شيء في دلال الأقصى ويريد أنا أستشهد Hello teacher tell me what's my lesson Look right through Right through me, and I find it kind of fun. I find The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take. The people run in circles, it's a very, very bad.